Okay, so this is our fourth video of nerve physiology. Uh, we're going to be focusing primarily on action potential and conduction in this video. Um, but let's uh, start off with a little bit of review because this vocab is really kind of important to the vocab of what we're going to be talking about. So uh, remember, hyperpolarization is anytime the charge becomes larger, depolarization is anytime it becomes smaller, or reverse polarization anytime it becomes positive. Because we are going to be talking about starting at rest, which is negative 70 millivolts. So if we're at rest, um, to move on, uh, anytime the number gets larger, number negative 80, negative 9, negative 100, that's hyperpolarization. Anytime it gets smaller, um, negative 55 is the big number we're going to talk about. Depolarization, anytime it becomes positive, we're going to talk about reverse polarization. So action potential is a very important concept for us, guys. Action potential is very, very important. This is the classic textbook definition. It's a, a sequence of events that depolarizes, so the number getting smaller, the charge getting smaller, reverse polarizes, the inside becomes positive, and then repolarizes, which essentially is just our way of resetting, recharging the neuron. Okay? So um, generally what we're looking at, remember, at rest, at resting potential, our neuron kind of looks like this. Okay, here's our inside, here's our outside. We have most of the sodium is outside, most of the potassium is inside, okay? And um, the inside is the negative side, the outside is the positive side, and remember our charge is negative 70 millivolts, okay? So something has to happen to set this off, guys. Um, we have to have a stimulus, okay? Some sort of a stimulus it can be a vibration in your ear. It could be chemicals on your tongue. Um, generally, remember the gated channels we just spoke about? One of those gated channels can get opened up, and it's almost always going to let a little bit of sodium go in. So if we open up a door right here for sodium, okay? If we open up the sodium door. Let's say this is a sodium channel right here. Uh, sodium would love to go inside because remember the inside is negative it's a positive charge so it would love to come inside here um, and uh, it would like to go from high concentration to low concentration so it would love to diffuse inside here so there's two reasons sodium would love to come inside here if you open up a sodium door a little bit comes inside and remember the big concept though the one that bothers people is remember sodium isn't hanging out by himself here it's already paired up it's got this negative buddy right so if sodium goes through it'll leave behind its negative buddy and the new sodium that goes through will come in here and be able to pair up and what will happen is these guys right here will be able to run away they'll leave the membrane you got a new positive they're not stuck in the membrane anymore these guys right here will leave the membrane they're not stuck in the membrane and essentially the end result is that these charge, this positive charge on the outside and this negative charge on the inside disappear and we now have less charge. Now we only have two positive charges, one here and one here and two negative charges stuck to the membrane. Okay, So that's an important idea for us guys and that will result in a depolarization, a drop in charge. Okay. Um, when we hit negative 55, which is what we call thresholds, a number you do need to know, guys, just like negative 70 is an important number, negative 55 is really important. When we hit negative 55, sodium doors open, and sodium is going to come rushing in. All the sodium, not just a little bit that the stimulus let in. Okay, we're talking all the sodium doors pop open, and lots of sodium rushes up. Okay, so let me clear the image here for a second. All right, so here we are negative 55, right, we're at threshold, negative 55, and the sodium doors open up, sodium again wants to come in for two reasons, remember the inside is negative, and it, uh, and it is positive, so sodium would love to come inside, and also, so it's going to go right through all these little doors, these little uh, sodium channels, okay, um, and then also remember it wants to diffuse, there's more sodium outside, a lot more outside, so it diffuses in. Okay. And what happens is so much sodium comes in, so many positive charges come inside that it actually makes the inside the now positive side. And we call that the reverse polarization, positive 30. This charge will actually go all the way to positive 30. Okay. Um, so let me skip ahead a couple slides and show you here. So this is what we've been at so far. Here's negative 70. We're at resting potential. We get some sort of a stimulus and we we lose charge, we start moving towards zero, right? So this is zero up here, so we're losing charge, that's depolarization. This slide uses negative 60, we're gonna use negative 55, um, but once we hit this point, that's when the sodium doors open, and sodium will come rushing in, hit sodium rushing in, so it hits zero, then more sodium comes in, and the inside becomes positive, we 
or positive 30, that's the reverse polarization. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. All right, so the next phase is called the repolarization phase. So at positive 30, the sodium just rushed in. Now the sodium door is closed. So those sodium doors are closed, and now the potassium voltage-gated door is open. So remember, voltage-gated refers to the fact they open a certain voltage. So we've got a neuron that looks like this with lots of sodium that's rushed inside. The inside's now the positive side. The outside's the negative side. And we got all this potassium inside here. So where do you think potassium wants to go out? Go? Well, obviously it wants to go out. It's positive. The outside is negative right now, so it wants to rush outside. Open up all these little gates for it. It's going to come rushing outside. Um, and also because it's diffusing from high to low. So you're going to get two reasons that potassium comes rushing outside. That's two different reasons. And we call that the electro. If I, didn't, I forgot to say that on the last slide. The electrochemical grid. The electro is going positive to negative. Okay? And the chemical is diffusion. So going from high concentration to low concentration. Okay? And as so much, uh, so much potassium rushes out, we lose more of these positive charges, kind of leave, and the inside becomes negative again. The inside becomes negative, and we call that the repolarization, um, but it becomes extra charged. So sometimes it's also referred to as the hyperpolarization or the after hyperpolarization. So let me clear some ink here and show you something. All right, so we just had natural potential. All the sodium came rushing inside, okay? All the potassium went rushing outside. Um, but now we want to be able to, the whole purpose of the repolarization is so we can do another, have a whole other action potential. So the last bit of this is remember we have those sodium potassium pumps. Here's a sodium potassium pump. And remember, a sodium potassium pump can actually take all this sodium and pump it back outside. Because remember, that's its job. It pumps three sodium out. Okay? And it can collect all this potassium and pump it back inside because it pumps two potassium in. Okay? Um, so the sodium potassium pump is going to put all of the ions back to the original side. So we're essentially completely resetting the neuron. Okay, let's skip ahead here for a second. So I keep skipping ahead because I think this is the most useful slide in the whole PowerPoint here, guys. So it gives you a big overview of an uh, action potential. Okay? So here's that positive 30. Okay? The sodium just rushed inside. The door is now closed. Sodium door is closed, but potassium door is open. Potassium comes rushing out, and we become extra charged for a little while here at the end. Okay. Um, now we're going to go back, and we're going to talk about these two vocab words here, absolute refractory and relative refractory period. So let me skip right back to those. Sorry. Okay. So absolute refractory period is a period of time when you cannot have another action potential. Um, and it's really important. It actually helps prevent the uh, signal from going backwards. Um, and, and we'll show you that. I'm actually going to have to talk about that a little bit more in class. But it helps prevent the signal from going backwards. Okay? Um, the relative refractory period is much simpler, but we'll come back to it. Okay? But just to give an idea, um, it's the time needed to reset the sodium channels. And look how fast this is. In our best axons, our best neurons, we can have um, a thousand impulses per second. Okay? That means if we're looking at the neuron, we can have the sodium rush in, the potassium rush out, and then the sodium potassium pump put everything back where it belongs a thousand times per second. So sodium and potassium out, reset a thousand times per second. Our slowest neurons, 250 times per second. So it's pretty amazing when you start looking at those details. All right. Um, the relative refractory period is uh, helps us to encode um, intensity to the brain. Okay. So, for instance, if we were to have a really strong stimulus, we could actually start another action potential right here. You could have another one right here. Have a whole other action potential. And the fact that these two action potentials are really close together would tell the brain there's a lot of stimulus there. Okay. If, for instance, we didn't, let's say we reset and then the next action potential wasn't until way out here, well, this in purple, that's a much different signal to the brain. So say this was pain. In green, your brain would say, wow, that's a lot of pain because I'm getting lots of action potentials that are really close together versus in purple, this, because the signal is really far apart, the brain would be able to interpret that, oh, that's not a whole lot of pain. That's just maybe like a dull ache or whatever it is. Okay, so that time in between is important, and that's what this relative refractory period helps us build in. All right.
All right, so every year I have, some, I have a lot of students that say, well, why the hell do we care about action potentials in, at all? Um, all they do is sodium rushes in, potassium rushes out, and then it resets. Well, it's this idea. It's propagation or conduction that's really important, okay? So the definition is that one action potential will actually trigger another action potential. So if this is one axon, okay, so let's say that's one axon, and we get an action that's right here. Sodium rushed in, potassium rushed out, um, sodium potassium pump reset us, okay? Well, what, what conduction or propagation tells us is that's going to cause another action potential right here. Sodium in, potassium out, reset, which causes another here, another here, and another here. And this is what actually moves through your body. So when you stub your toe, you start with one action potential right there in the pain receptor, and, and this wave goes up all the way to your brain, and that's how you feel it. Or if you want to move your finger, this is a signal that goes through your body. It starts with one action potential, and it causes a chain reaction that moves through your body. This is a wave of signals of action potentials going through. Right? Now, there's two types. There's continuous, which is what I just kind of drew, and then there's saltatory. Saltatory is when we have myelin. So if this was an axon, remember, myelin is the fat that's wrapped around it. Okay, so if this is fat here, you don't have action potentials in those spots. So it makes the signal go faster. So we'll have an action potential here, but we don't have any in this middle part. This whole middle part is blocked. No action potential is needed. So our next action potential is not until we get way over here. And then we got a whole section that's blocked. And then we would go over here for the next one. So to go this distance, we needed three action potentials to go in that distance. Versus up top here, we would need... I don't know, go the same distance, we might need, what, seven or eight to go in the same distance? So from here to here, seven or eight action potentials versus, and even though action potentials are really quick, it still makes it go faster. So look at the difference in numbers. In our small ones without myelins, uh, myelin on them, unmyelinated, okay, when they don't have myelin, uh, about one mile an hour, that's our slowest signal moving through the body. And then the large myelinated ones, we can go up to 280 miles an hour, 130 meters per second. Pretty astounding. Okay? So let's get rid of my crappy drawing and show you what it looks like for real. Okay? So over here and on this one, guys, uh, the basic idea is right here, we're in the middle of an action potential. Okay? And all these sodium ions that come inside will kind of move laterally. They call it local current or lateral current. And that actually becomes the stimulus that causes this part to reach threshold. And they're showing negative 60 here. Remember, we're using negative 55 as our number. Um, but that point reached threshold, so the sodium door is going to open up, and sodium is about to come rushing in here, which will then cause this section to reach threshold. So it moves right on down the line. This section is that first part. It finished its action potential. It's in the refractory period. It's resetting. Okay. This part's in the middle of an action potential. It's reverse polarized, and then those ions are going to move this way and it's going to trigger a new action potential in this third section, and that's how it moves down. And that's called continuous because there is no myelin. It's just right down the line versus saltatory. Exact same idea. This one's in the middle of an action potential. Here goes the local current next to it, guys. So the local current goes next to it, starts a new action potential here, and then that will move to this one. But because we're skipping these big sections, um, this would be the myelin in red here. This is going to be the myelin, so we don't have those action potentials, and it makes the signal go much faster. So, just one last time. Finished an action potential, middle of an action potential, about to start an action potential, right? So they're about to start. So you end up with this kind of wave moving through the body. Right. So the last idea that's on here, guys, is called the all or none or signal interpretation. All or none and signal interpretation. So, um, big idea. Every action potential is the exact same size. Okay, All action potentials and impulses are the exact same size. If we reach threshold, sodium rushes in, potassium rushes out, same thing happens every time. So uh, going back to our question earlier, if you stub your toe and it hurts a lot, okay, the action potentials that go to the brain are the exact same size. That doesn't change. Okay, um, But what tells your brain that it hurts a lot versus the time that you you know, just kind of bumped your toe, or you put your shoe on, your shoe can just feel your toe, the toe, okay? So this is something I'd like you guys to think about, right? This last question here, think about it, jot some ideas down, and we're going to talk about that in class. All right? See you in class.